All right, this one, this is a double base. I've been really excited to film. You guys remember how much I love the Sagamore Sherry Finish? Well, I was lucky enough to get the new Rift Barrel Proof Sherry Finish and couldn't wait to put them head to head. Happy Friday, everybody. It's a double base. What's up, folks? I'm Jason C, and welcome back to the Mass and Drum. Like, subscribe, share, and welcome to today's double bass. If you have any suggestions for some head to head matchups, leave them below in the comments. Always like hearing from you guys. Today's matchup includes some sherry finished rise that have truly impressed so far, but we'll see what happens when they go head to head. So let's meet the competitors real quick. Uh, first is the new Reserve Series from Sagamore Spirit, their Sherry Finish Rye Whiskey. Takes their four-year-old straight rye whiskey, which then spends an additional 18 months in 132-gallon PX Sherry barrels. One of my favorite ryes this year, it's bottled 106 proof and retails for about 70, 75 bucks. In the other corner, its competition is the New Riff Malted Rye Whiskey finished in sherry casks, bottled at barrel strength without chill filtration and secondarily aged in Oloroso and Pedro Jimenez sherry casks. This released way back in May and has gotten nothing but high praise for those who were able to get a bottle. New Riff imported custom-made 53-gallon Spanish sherry casks and then filled them with their five-year-old New Riff Malted Rye Whiskey. To be exact, 12 Oloroso and 3 Pedro Jimenez casks were filled with whiskey and then aged another full year before being blended and left to marry for several months until they were bottled in spring of 2022. This is bottled straight from the barrel at 112.7 proof and it retailed at the time when it was released for about $65, $66. All right, guys, before we dive in, I have an exciting new sponsor here on the Mass and Drum with a deal all you whiskey lovers have to take advantage of. It's about that time. It's Original Grain. Original Grain. Very excited about this, guys. Mass and Drum's newest sponsor has been making watches from unique materials for almost a decade. It's a veteran and family-owned company started by two brothers in the Pacific Northwest that has built a reputation for designing iconic, handcrafted watches with unique materials that tell a story. This is my new favorite watch from them. I also have another one that I've worn uh, in a lot of my videos before. Their Whiskey Barrel Age Series is crafted with reclaimed American oak bourbon barrel wood. That's right. You can see the barrel wood in each detail of the watch. It's not overly heavy. The mix of wood and metal makes such an impression. It's beautifully crafted. I get compliments on it all the time. They come in 42 and 46 millimeter face sizes, different colors, different styles, and can be the ultimate Christmas or holiday gift for the fellow whiskey lover in your life. You ready for this deal? All you gotta do is go to originalgrain.com slash mash and use code mash at checkout. They're currently running a 20% off Black Friday deal right now, but using my link and code will give you an extra 10% off. So that makes it a total of 30% off. This is the highest markdown you're gonna get for the holidays. Thanks to Original Grain for sponsoring the Mash and Drum. Now go shopping, get one of these. All right, guys, so we're back. So I use the black Glencairns because there is a color difference in these two, and I didn't really want to see that color <laughs> uh, to kind of clue me in on what was what. So I'm just going to mix these around. And basically, we're just going to go best two out of three. If you could take two out of three in the categories of nose, palette, and finish, then you are the victor. So let's see what we got here. Boom, stopping right here. We're going to go with the first glass on my left. Here we go. All right, so this has all the sherry influence going on here, guys. This is the raisin. Man, blackberry. The rye spice is definitely there. Remember, they are, you know, finished rye, so I think you're going to get some of that rye spice here. Now, I'm wondering if I'll get more in one or the other because I haven't put these directly head to head yet. So, man, I'm getting like pecans and molasses. This one is very, very dark and very, very rich, but also very sweet. It's more on the sweet side. Let's go to this one. Wow, guys, this one, this one is is complete opposite in the way that this one is more rye forward than this one is. So this one has all those sherry notes, the dark sherry notes, and this one I'm smelling now just comes in with a bunch of rye spice. The sherry is there, but I think the rye is the forward component, whereas in the first class, 
the sherry is the forward component. So this one comes off way more of a combination of orange peel uh, and some strawberry. It's kind of like this uh, mixed combination of both. It's very bright and sweet. A little bit of cotton candy here too. But I'm also picking up a little bit of a chocolate note here too, which is kind of nice. But this is more of like a milk chocolate compared to this one, which was like a dark chocolate. All right, nose. They both smell fantastic, but I think this one is more layered. There just has a lot more going on in the nose. It's uh, it, it's chocolate. I'm getting the the pecan. I'm getting like a little bit even of like a praline type note. Whereas this one, it's a little bit more rye forward. It's a little bit brighter, a little bit sweeter. And while I don't mind either of them, I like the layered flavors I'm getting from uh, the glass one. So this one wins on nose. Let's go to palate. See what we get. Oh man, oh man. I got the sherry a lot on the nose, but on the palate, you get a lot of the sherry which explodes up front and then man, it just turns into rye spice, black pepper. That's friggin' delicious. Yeah, all the, no oh there's the, and there's like this burst of chocolate right on the palate. Oh my gosh, that's really good. Chocolate, pecan, praline, and again, those dark, like the raisin. Yeah, chocolate covered raisins all day long. I think I have a feeling which one that is, but again, I haven't compared these. I don't remember, let me see here. <laughs> oh wow, oh, okay. So on the palette, number two, which I expected to be brighter, it it comes off a little bit darker on the palette than it did on the nose. I still think it's more rye forward, which I think it is. I think there's way more rye spice. You get like the rye bread note in it. There's a lot more of like that citrus, black tea, that mint characteristic that's there. This is like a, uh, like drinking, um, it's almost like a strawberry mojito <laughs> on the on the palate because you get all the mint, you get some of that strawberry sweetness. I'm not gonna say like it's maple, like maple syrup at all, but no, there's there was definitely like a molasses milk chocolate thing also going on as well. Oh, this is close. This is close. I. Remember, two out of three wins it, so this is big. Oh man. So when you go back and forth, when you go from one to the other, the first one's flavors are just so rich. And you know what, one thing that kinda, I haven't really talked about yet is the texture on the palate, the mouthfeel of it, how creamy it is. Number one, I think, has that in spades over number two. Number two has really delicious flavors, and it's got a great uh, a great spice. It's got a great balance. I really thought it was going to be a lot brighter on the palate compared to that one, but this has some darkness as well. It's just a little bit more rye forward, but one just has such a depth of flavor, and the rye spice and the finish on this thing Ridiculous, yeah, I'm gonna have to go to number one for the <laughs> for the palette. Maybe the finish too, just as I'm just talking about it. I mean, I think number one has already taken it. It's one, two out of three. But number one has like this sneaky long finish that just kind of blooms right at the very end. Let's go to number two. Oh, the finish on two, though. The finish on two is there, but it hits you more immediate, and it's also a little bit more ride-driven. Whereas number one, I think it comes on a little bit later, 
but then all those layers come in the cho the the dark chocolate note I really get on the finish on number one so it's number one number one with the I mean, we're going to say it's a clean sweep, but it's a, it was very close in each category. I think the one that only number one dominated in is nose. Number one's nose is I liked a lot better than number two. So, uh, but palette and finish on both of them, really close, which is good because whichever one wins, the new rip is pretty hard to find and the Sagamore is just coming out now. So, um, if either of them sound good to you, might be a little hard to find the new rip, but at least you get the sherry cask from, uh, from Sagamore. So let's see what won. Really? Okay. All right. Well, I'm kind of glad I just said what I said because the new riff, the new riff barrel proof sherry cask finish comes in with the, with just a sweep. Holy hell. And then the Sagamore sherry. I mean, this is one of my favorite rides of the year, but this one just made a play <laughs> for one of my favorite rides this year. First of all, overall, I'm a huge fan of the New Riff Malted Rye whiskeys. That's where New Riff shines. I mean, I, I am a fan of their bourbon, but I think what they do with rye whiskeys is incredible. And for Sagamore, you guys have heard me talk about Sagamore before. I still think they're kind of under the radar, but you guys have heard me say that before. Absolutely delicious stuff. This one is just starting to come out now, so if you haven't, if any of this sounds good to you, that Sagamore, uh, that Sagamore Sherry Finish Rye is just starting to drop everywhere, so. If you have Sagamore near you, or you could try to find it online, I would highly recommend that bottle. But this new riff, unfortunately this came out all the way back in May. I don't even know if any of these are around, but if you, if anybody sees this just sitting around, cause sometimes they pop back up, it, it, it's an, this is an immediate buy. Absolutely fantastic matchup. Uh. All right guys, well thanks for watching this double base episode as we put new riff Sherry Cask versus Sagamore Sherry Cask, both finished rise hope you enjoyed it if you did hit that subscribe button below please hit the like button if you haven't yet follow me on instagram follow me on twitter uh let me know down in the comments if you put these two together yet or if you uh if you haven't found one of these or if you were lucky enough to get the new riff also if you have any ideas for uh upcoming double bass episode please put them down below yes uh, yes i know i'm gonna blend them i'm gonna i know one of you out there just said is he gonna blend them yeah i'm gonna blend them i'm blending it right now here we go all right i don't know if this is gonna work I'm, I'm thinking maybe yes. I mean, they're both rise, they're both sherry. Let's see. That did not work. Not really. I think it's because it's probably using just two different types, three different types of sherry casks here that just aren't marrying well. In theory, I really thought that would have worked, but it didn't work. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching the Master Drum Whiskey Room. I'll see you next week right here. Take care, guys. Cheers.